So there are some parts of North America where European domestic livestock uh, did very well. And like certain plants and certain diseases, they were novel species to the North American environment. What's interesting and unique about North America prior to European colonization is that there were actually very few domestic animals. Um, some birds, like turkeys uh, and dogs. Um, there were no cows, there were no domesticated horses, there were no chickens, there were no pigs. These are animals that are quite ordinary today. Um, but in the 1600s and in the 1700s in some parts of North America, they were completely unknown. It would be like introducing a space alien into this environment. So in certain parts of North America, these animals thrive. Um, the uh, ecological conditions are highly conducive to opportunist animals like pigs, for example. They can populate in huge numbers and spread and thrive and again provide a kind of food foundation for human colonists to then spread and thrive in North American environments. Canada was a little bit different. There were some parts of Canada where this happened quite well, like in southern Ontario, in the more agriculturally productive parts of the southern Ontario peninsula. And then in other parts of Canada, animals didn't do so well. In the St. Lawrence Valley in Quebec, for example, uh, French colonists were able to establish small populations of domestic livestock, but not the very large herds that would later be established in parts of the eastern seaboard of the United States. And this makes Canada's colonial experience, I think, a little bit different. The agricultural economies of what becomes Quebec and Ontario develop in different ways from uh, American colonies uh, because of some of these ecological limits to the spread of livestock, I think. And then as we look out west, livestock, uh, European livestock, don't begin to thrive in substantial numbers until the railway is built because the transfer of those animals was incredibly difficult before the railway was built. And so you have a kind of confluence of technology and biology transforming the ecosystems of Western Canada in the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century in ways that weren't possible before those technologies compressed time and space by making it easier to ship hundreds of cattle into the West uh, via rail rather than having to walk them there uh, in large herds.